Hello everyone and welcome back. So, we just watched um, Ethan and Olivia go through another PowerPoint on H3 discussing the hit piece Vanity Fair article. Slandry Quintana were on to you. And they have uploaded another one, which is basically going through the article and Ethan like bit by bit goes through it. Now, whenever they were doing the live show, I watched the PowerPoint. I have not watched this part. So this is going to be a first for me. So if anyone has seen this in chat, let me know if anyone has seen this in YouTube already. Please let me know down below. I have no idea what to expect. My mother and father watched this live and told me that I need to watch it. And I said that I was going to do it live on stream. Okay, so people have. So I don't know what to expect. We're just going to get three and watch it. I appreciate H3 for still wanting to cover this. Um, so shout out to them for that. And let's get to it. So the title of it is The Colleen Ballinger Puff Piece is Psychotic. So I think we know what their opinion is going to be, but let's get into it. My mom has written, I have seen it. All right, let's take a look. How the Mar uh, Miranda Sings Colleen Ballinger scandal went off the let's rails. Let's get into it. Went off the rails. I mean, off the rails reference to H3, maybe? Because, I mean, H3 was the first one to, like, get reprimanded by, I mean, the fake copyright strikes. They confirm that it's very easy to fake that, so that's not Colleen's responsibility. But off the rails reference to Colleen um, and H3, maybe? Who knows? Okay. I mean, the, the title implies that the scandal itself lost credibility by going off the rails. Yeah. And I would almost argue that the scandal got more credibility the more off the rails it went because it's been more and more people commenting on it and more and more people coming out with their own stories or a reference to the toxic gossip train could be anything. I mean, yeah, coming off the rails, but I mean, the article is so shitty that if you're going to have a good reference like that, have a good article with it. Oh. Here's, a, here's an alternative thought. How Andrew Quintana's career went off the rails. <laughs> Do you think that might be a play on the train? Toxic gossip train thing. Oh, that would be clever. Oh. That would be clever. <laughs> the unanimous. Oh, from the, from the team. It probably is, huh? Okay, Do you think it's a reference to our show? That's what I was fucking better be suggesting. Could Toxic be. gossip train. So, okay, so everything you know about the drama tearing YouTube apart already it's bad. Tearing YouTube apart. Sam Badger has been a YouTube star for more than a decade, amassing tens of million followers, many of whom found her when they were teenagers or even younger. Okay, I mean, this is an interesting top comment. An important detail that H3 team have missed is that Ethan was reading an updated version of the article. The original got Adam's birth, city, and country wrong. Truly written by a journalist who thoroughly researched the topic. This was the only correction in an article full of, uh, you know, wrong claims. Go figure. And that is true. The original article said that Adam McIntyre, who grew up in Brighton, England... They got the city and the country wrong that I'm from. But they got everything apparently right. Apparently this was a thorough research thing. They got the city and country wrong that I'm from. I'm from Derry in Ireland. And if you want to speak politically or anything, Derry in Northern Ireland. Still is not England. <laughs> so they literally got, even if you're speaking politically, you got the country wrong and you got the city wrong that I'm from. Which, by the way, only takes a simple little Google search because every single other article about this that happens to reference where I'm from says lives in Brighton from Derry, lives in England from Ireland. How have you gotten every single fact about me wrong in this shitty article down to where I'm from or live? Like down to the country. And, and then you're like, oh, finally, only believe trusted, reliable media is what Slandry wrote. I'm only going to address him as Slandry from Niom. Boo. They fell hard for a potty comedy. Oh, sorry. And periodically, specifically her fictional alter ego, Miranda Sings. Talentless adolescent who delusionally believes she can sing and also was trying to have sex with her uncle constantly. Is that right? Or the or uncle being abused. Yeah, yeah, I huh? guess. Hmm. In funny. her most comedic attempt. Oh my god. <laughs> Look above Olivia. I thought that there was someone on their team. Talentless. Watch this. Adolescent. Watch this. I thought that there was someone on their team above Olivia moving around and stuff. Watch this. Because the I thought that there was someone above Olivia here. It's one of the ads on the thing. I was like, who's this woman? Look at her. I thought that this was part of their set. I was like, who's this woman? Most comedic attempt. You know what I mean? To be, to be fair, an uncle molesting his niece is quite funny. Right. I mean, that's right. ripe for satire right there. Buddy. Especially for, like, children's satire. Mm -hmm. That's extra good. Mm -hmm. Adult incest. They love that. Sure the children you. watching YouTube. If anyone is not understanding what they're saying there is pointing out how it's not. Just in case, because I know there'll be people commenting. 
they're making reference to how that is so not funny. And that's what Colleen's entire act with Miranda sings is that at its core is that Miranda is being or is being abused. So they're they're pointing out how awful that is. Because I know there'll be comments being like, why didn't you address that Ethan said that? They're making a point of it. The persona resonated with outcast kids who found her despite desire for fame to be also accurately cringe. Such success earned Ballinger a Netflix series, sold out live shows, and most recently rapidly intensifying controversy. Late last month, Rolling Stones published a story alleging that Ballinger had engaged in inappropriate behavior with underage fans. The magazine verified screenshots of text in which Ballinger asked a minor- My favorite part that I'm always gonna say, I'm always gonna say whenever I read this part, it says, the magazine verified screenshots in which Ballinger asked a fan about their virginity, favorite sexual position, and asked them to send pictures of their body. And then a couple sentences later says, we have confirmed that there is no evidence that even hints at the possibility of Ballinger acting in an inappropriate way with minors. Yet two sentences before, they say that there was verified screenshots from Rolling Stones, but then they go, but there is no verified screenshots. So what is it? About their virginity status and their favorite sexual position. She also asked them to send pictures of their body. Yikes. Well, that sounds bad already. How we, where do we go from here? However, inappropriate, however inappropriate her alleged behavior was, the article- We're gonna make excuses for it. ...that no sex crime had been committed and that no evidence in review even hinted at the possibility that Ballinger had intended to start a sexual relationship with a child. Okay, so it's cool then. Right. So they do end it by running deep for her. Ballinger did not respond to Rolling Stone's multiple quests for comment. But don't worry, they re they responded to Vanity Fair's because Vanity Fair, you know, wrote such a glorifying article about them. They go from here, but yeah, I mean, they're they're running D for her already. That's a good point that Dan made. Dan was like, "Where do we go from here?" Like you just said that magazine verified screenshots of her doing this. Like, where do you go from here in the article? Just shut it down, Slandry. Yes, it's true. She did ask Myers about the virginity and asked them to send pictures of their body. However. She wasn't trying to fuck them, as far as we can tell. That is the argument he's making. The only thing I've ever groomed is my two virgin cats. Iconic. That, that is iconic. That is, that is one of the greatest lines in YouTube history. She thought, this is good. And then she it wrote is that good. Down in her, it's, in her so good. Book. it's so good. Um, to those steeped in the world of YouTube fandom, a chaotic, shape-shifting minefield, where a, 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 allegiances are fortified and swapped by the hour. All right, chill, bro. Not that crazy. Many of these claims were not new. Ballinger had. I mean, that's such a good point that Ethan's bringing up. He's like, they're already speaking so dramatically about the YouTube world. They're like a YouTube world, a chaotic, shape-shifting minefield where allegiances are formed and swapped by the ire. Mama, it's YouTube. Oh, this YouTube world's so crazy! It's tearing YouTube apart! Ah! It's YouTube. It's YouTube. You know, you know who that's catered towards? It's catered towards, like, people above a certain age who do not know about YouTube and only hear about it through, like, their nieces and nephews or, like, children or something like that to, like, scare them. YouTube... Ah! That's, that's, that's what it's catered towards. It's catered towards that. It's catered to, like, scare you of YouTube already. So, like, if you're reading this and you know nothing about YouTube, you're like... Ah! That's what it's catered towards. Had even already responded to some of them. Rolling but Stone. everyone covering this topic is people that know the YouTube world and are reading this and they're like, okay. This piece was tame. Seagally loud. Legally sound. Fuck, my dyslexia is crazy right now. I literally said seagally loud. <laughs> I don't know how that, I couldn't do that if I tried, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like a tongue twister. Uh, legally, <laughs> thank you. Legally sound, one could argue, compared to the language and rumors that have been flying around for years. Yet his publication preceded stalker allegations against, wait, Founder getting similarly ushered into the mainstream press. Who alleged who? Starker, not of oh, Starker. Ah, all right. <laughs> Let me center myself. Would you like me to read it? No, I got this. Okay, you got it. Not Stalker allegations. Just give me a minute. I'm just pull together. I'm centering my He's mind. He's got this. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> a few days after the Rolling Stone piece went live, HuffPost published its own investigation report. Her fans say she groomed them as teens. 
In the ensuing weeks, Ballinger would be accused of everything from performing a Beyonce song in blackface. Isn't that so interesting? This is really my first time, like, really dissecting this. The fact that the article goes, after an article from Huffington Post investigatively said her fans say she groomed them as teens, Ballinger would be accused of blackface. It jumps from the grooming thing to yet again the blackface thing because the blackface thing is the only thing that they can defend Colleen in. No, she was wearing green face paint. How do you be like an investigative article about her grooming kids was published online now to her performing allegedly in blackface? It doesn't, it's, it's not, I'm going to be honest, I'm not gagging. It's not the gag that they thought it was. It's not the gag and it, whenever you use the Beyonce blackface thing so often, it's like, damn, ma, you got anything else? Like, you got anything else, really? Have you got anything else? There's only so many times we can hear you reference back to, she didn't do blackface, she was wearing green face paint. Which, by the way, if you're, if you're performing a set of songs and you're performing a Beyonce song and you're purposely performing a song before it in which you have to cover your entire face in paint... And then you link that in your book without context. Perform the Beyonce song before you perform the Wicked. But let me tell you something. This is her type of humor. And it was that it was there for a reason, in my opinion. Right? Please. Seriously, you're performing a song in which you have to paint your face like completely cover your face in paint that from certain seats in the theater will look like the darkest thing on your face from different points of lighting right you have to perform a song like that where you have to completely change your look for wicked for to be you know face paint head to toe and then you perform a beyonce song after it perform the beyonce song first and do the big wicked thing at the end but no there was a certain reason that they were performed in that order let me tell you something. She's not a she's not a stupid person. She does things thinking they're funny, in my opinion. But I mean, I think we're all aware of that looking at other types of humor of her online. To texting a right. sex didn't happen. Did not happen as we know. To texting a sex worker's nudes to a minor. Did the article even address uh her writer's assistance uh racism claims? Uh no. They just focused on me. Ballinger's legal team has denied she performed in blackface. And also, one thing that's really interesting is Colleen, in all of her years of touring, has never changed her fucking tour. Like, whenever I saw her in 2014, 2016, and 2018, the bitch did the same numbers the entire fucking three shows. Like, she lacks creativity. So she would perform this. This isn't, I'm not even saying this is a drag. I have a point with this. She performed the same opening, the same closing, the same comedy bits the same like running jokes, the same audience participation for three fucking shows that in her last time coming to Dublin, people were not buying tickets to her show because her show in 2016 was the same repeated show and people on Facebook were ripping the shit out of her that the venue ends up canceling one of the shows because she was so severely underselling. So she was supposed to do two nights in Dublin. They ended up canceling one because no one wanted to go to it because it was the same show she kept coming back and doing and it was like a slap in the face of the audience. And so, in that section of the show, she always did Wicked. However, she never put green face paint on. She never, never, never painted her face. For Defying Gravity, what did she do again? She would just change from Colleen into Miranda and she would put lipstick on and she would wear a green cape. So, let me show you something, right? So, she kept that Wicked thing and also the beyonce in her shows she would perform different artist songs and stuff i don't necessarily know if it was beyonce but she would do like lady gaga i mean lizzo all these different people right and the wicked part stayed however there's a reason that she never put face paint on again because i mean the the, the media would have at her a life for it she knew what she was doing from a certain year on, she all included the both parts of the show. Yes, yeah, she did. Oh my God, wait, wait, wait. She performed Formation, I think, from Beyonce at all the shows I went to. And she would wear a hat or something like that. It was a Beyonce song of some degree, right? 
And she performed that after she did Wicked. However, she never put the face paint on her face because she didn't need to. It was put on her face, in my opinion, for a certain reason years and years ago, back in 2009 or whenever it was, because blackface, racism, this is what comedic people relied on. And I'm just saying that Obviously, they're saying that this wasn't her intention, but I'm going to say that, in my opinion, the songs were performed in a specific order so that she, her face would be absolutely covered in paint for the Beyonce one. That's just my opinion. Her team are going on the record saying that it wasn't her, her reasoning behind it. All right, I don't believe that, but sure, because she would perform the same bit for her entire tour up until, like, 20-whatever-it-was, and she would perform the Beyonce song, not Single Ladies, but a different one, and she would also perform the Wicked song. And she would never put her face in that because she would get at alive on social media. So? I think she was wearing... So they're in touch, by the way. She, they're they're intimately in touch with her team. Oh, yeah. Andrew and Andrew. Andrew and Andrew were tight like that. Andrew Squared, they called themselves. Mm -hmm. So her lawyers say she didn't wear blackface, which we know. Uh, and the other second, much more serious thing, uh, no comment. Uh, uh, and sexting <laughs> uh, sex workers news to a minor. Yeah, no comment on that. Uh, her Sings tour has been canceled, her career abruptly, abruptly stalled, and when reached for comment, Ballinger's lawyers replied in an email that Vanity Fair's inquiries were simply a regurgitation of the baseless and unsubstantiated claims that other media outlets and individuals on social media have reported. When reached for comment. So this is what they told them? Yeah. Because they probably didn't, they are probably like, what do you think about this? They're like, okay. So the point here is that they reached out to Colleen's legal team and they responded, but they didn't reach out to anyone else in this. I believe you. Mm-hmm. I'm cool. Anyone, if anyone named Andrew tells me anything, I'm with them. Right. Me and, cool. we and the Andrews, we got to stick tight, dog. Yeah. The reality of some of these claims, in turn, the broader narrative around Ballinger remains murky. Various allegations remain unverified, left to endlessly circulate as they fall under the ever-expanding umbrella of inappropriate behavior. Okay, stop. Uh -oh. Talk about the allegation. <laughs> Once again, her lawyers have come out against two specific points only. Blackface. And uh, the copyright thing. Claiming videos, yeah. All the other stuff, mum's the word. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Or a super, super vague about everything. <laughs> it's baseless and unsubstantiated. Like, are you going to talk about specific claims or no? Because if not, we're not listening. Right. Talk listening. about all of them. Yeah. Not just the ones that are not true. <laughs> right. And, and not important, really. In a sense, this is a familiar story for the social media age, but Ballinger's downfall is unique. She brought teens into an adult world and made it feel like it was theirs, then saw those fans turn against her. It's a product of a particular era. I mean, this is something I've said before, but I think it's very telling that they keep hyper fixating on like two claims. And we could be talking about grooming and they'd be like, but blackface! Or we could be like, um, yeah, but her brother was, you know, flirting with minors and they're like, but we didn't copyright strike the hello song! You know what I mean? You're making yourself look less or more guilty. YouTube stardom of a digital persona able to cultivate a feverish and savvy fandom that's been trained to reverse course and maybe seek payback with the first spilling of tea. I don't I don't like it being called tea. Are okay. we using groom and uh, spilling of tea in the same article? Because that's trying to diminish thing. it. The, the thing that's really insidious is if our parents were just randomly come across this. They not, they're not familiar. They just heard a little bit about what's going on. Is he going to make the point that I made about who the demographic of this article is for? If he is, we're on the same wavelength. You, they, you could probably read this and be like, oh, this is all bullshit. Okay, he is. It's made for a certain demographic that don't understand the social media platforms or what is actually going on. And it's going to work for those demographics. It's trying to hit the parents, which is interesting to me because it's trying to win the parents back, right? The parents are the ones that spend money towards Colleen. The children don't have money. The parents are the ones that buy the tour tickets. The parents are the ones that decide whether or not their kids can support someone. The parents are the ones that buy the children merch. The parents, dare I go on, it's made to fix the relationship between Colleen and the parents. It needs to get the parents back on site again because their children are seeing what's happening. And there is currently a possibility that, you know, to the parents before they read this article, maybe my child will be the next one that Colleen Ballinger grims. You know what I mean? So this article is trying to save the parents in Colleen's world again. Yeah, it, it like murkies the waters entirely. You have no idea what they're saying didn't happen, what did. It's just like, oh, I guess none of this really happened and it's all... Just this damn cancel culture. Unsubstantiated. 
It's all, dude, the, the fans have been trained to turn against you with the, the smallest drop of tea. One drop of tea is all it takes, sis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could be forgiven if you were one of the millions who, back in the summer of 2020, allied some COVID anxiety by diving into YouTube's drama unfolding between Ballinger and a former fan, Adam McIntyre. Bold, baby, got that bold text. <laughs> a then 17-year-old Ballinger was his idol. Her merch could be seen all over the Irish teenager's bedroom where he was- So by the way, that was a, that was the only edited line. The original line was Adam McIntyre, who was like born or like lives in Brighton or what, is from Brighton, England or something like that. Like that was the part that has been changed. To Irish teenager's bedroom. And by the way, they're, they're trying to paint this in a way, right? Which I think is very, very, very interesting. Um, they're currently, hold on, I'm trying to get back and focus here. Hey, do you want to focus, Queen? Um, they're trying to paint this um, like the Irish teen, the seventeen-year-old's Irish bedroom could be seen covered in posters about Ballinger, which isn't true. They're referencing a video on my channel from. Let me pull it up. So they're ignoring the fact that all of this Awkward. happened between the ages for me 13 or well i mean it was really nine but like 13 to 17 um the videos that they're talking about let me pull it up here where would it be they're referencing this which i don't know is the the right thing that they want to do because this was 2015 so this was Around the time, so it was a couple months after this that Colleen Ballinger started opening up to me about her sex life and divorce. So I hope that that opens up some reference for you just looking at me here, by the way. Um, they're referencing this video when they say that her posters could be seen behind the scenes. By the way, this was a, a signed photo she sent me. So she had sent me that. I'm wearing a Miranda t-shirt and I have my meet and greet photos here. I have Miranda, Jenna Marbles, Colleen bethany moda i think and someone else here i think it might have been zoella or something like that and then i have who else do i have there just other youtubers that i write, like right so they're saying that the 17 year old bedroom was plastered plastered in images of her they're trying to make me at 17 years old seem like a, a crazed stalker at 17 years old that wasn't the truth at 17 years old it was whenever we were fighting at what age was i what age was I at in 2015? Quick. What age was I in 2015? 13. So at 13 was whenever. So 12, 13. Oh, wait. This was before my birthday, though. So it would have been 12, 13, whatever. At 12 and 13 was whenever I had posters on because that was my favorite YouTuber. I also have other, you know, ones there. I have Selena Gomez posters. I have whatever. It was not whenever I was 17. But I wish that they had linked this video because this would show you that this child right here was shy of a couple months later, Colleen Ballinger opening up to him about her sex life and her divorce. So when you watch this clip, take that in. That Colleen Ballinger saw this face and went, Hmm, let me do this. So why not, like... Salut, and um, I'm probably going to do a speaking vlog and a voiceover vlog, and... Why not include the video, then? Include the video and show exactly who she was opening up about her sex life to. So it is now nearly midnight, and we have to go for the airport... Include the video. In the morning, and our Prove my the point morning. further, so motherfucker. See you at the airport or outside or whatever. Prove my point further, motherfucker. Slandry, you're going fucking down. Prove my point further, motherfucker. And include the video. It wasn't no 17-year-old that had posters of her. It was a 13-year-old. It was a 13-year-old. And keep in mind, she saw that and thought, great. Let me open up about my sex life. Let me open up about my divorce. Let me tell this person about the about my ex-husband's penis size let me talk about being abused let me talk about that's what she thought when she saw this face that's what she thought when she saw this face 
let me ask this person for advice on what to do when I'm being abused by my husband. Let me open up about... Include the video. Include the video because I don't think it's the gotcha moment. I do not think it's the gotcha moment that you think it is. I do not think it's the gotcha moment you think it is. Videos. He was an inspiring influencer himself, making sweet, low-stakes YouTube content about his life. On June 22, McIntyre posted a video to his channel titled, Colleen Bellinger Stop Lying. In it, McIntyre told several seemingly unrelated stories. One recounted the time Bellinger sent him lingerie in the mail to his mother's horror. Okay, now I'm not even going to read this, this uh, parent, the uh, parenthetical, but I'm sure it's defending her. The laundry was it is. and unworn, and Ballinger has since apologized for sending it, yeah. But she didn't edit out the fact that she was like, do you want the brand panties, Adam? Oh my god, your parents will be like, what the hell, who's this creep sending you? Didn't include any of that, because again, that would show that she's a creep. But anytime something's mentioned that it sounds like really, really bad, they have to that add is. some parenthetical that's like, but it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Another and that's why I'm going to bring this fucker down. Because anything he says that defends me, he immediately has to go on the record trying to explain it. So not even are you painting me in a kind of way, you're trying to... Slandry. Just wait, motherfucker. ...intended to debunk the rumor that he was secretly behind some anti miranda Singh social media account that Bellinger had gotten wind of. A third uh, concern concerned the fallout of a tweet that Ballinger allowed McIntyre to post. Miranda Sings from the character Twitter account that led him to never posting on her behalf again. He'd been considered her social media intern, he said, with hopes of being employed by her one day in that capacity. Ballinger says he only had access to her account for one day and that if it went well, she had planned to hire him formally. That's Ignoring the fact that I had edited, given her ideas, worked on tweets, worked on thumbnails for four years prior to that. But that's not included either. Is it Slandry, Quintana? Bullshit. What? One day? That's always what she has said. Um, she just gave him access for one day. He was giving her to ideas Thank and you. tweets for years before. Olivia, I love you. <laughs> Olivia, I fucking love you. She gave him her login also. I fucking you love you, Olivia. Log that it's really obvious. It, 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 there's an ease with that relationship that says to me that they've been doing this for a while. By the way, I have this shirt. Oh, yeah, she trusted him. Because she was like, yeah, go ahead. That sounds good. Yep. Like, if that was day one, would you really be talking about posting to your main social media like that? Thank you! No, I wouldn't. Uh, let's see. The tween question was seized upon in queer baiting by Miranda's uh, fandom as she came out as a Megan Trainer fan and led to, led to intense backlash. Might sound strange to hear, but Ballinger had put a fan in charge of her character's Twitter to begin with, but that access went in line with her public image. That's not a defense. That is so weird. Yeah, so, again, giving a fan access to your Twitter is weird. I've never heard of that. I would never do that. And also, he's a minor. But then, again, in the second part, he, he, he attempts to downplay it. But this, all, this actually all made sense in line with her public image. What does that even mean? How did it make sense that she gave her password out to a young fan because of her character? Here he says Ballinger was closely aligned with her- I'm so glad that these points, like, don't even make sense to people. It's like anything she touches trying to defend herself or anyone defending her, we're so past that point that it just turns to fucking dog shit. And I'm so glad because that's the difference from 2020 to now. Like, this would not have been the case in 2020. It would have been like, Adam, shut the fuck up. But, like- most devoted young viewers. That's it? So that's why she gave her password away to post on her social medias? No, I don't think- That's like saying- that's like saying Blue's Clues just lets kids post to their Twitter. Yeah. Not necessarily correlated. Yeah, what? We- everybody has fans online. Doesn't mean they get the shit post to their Twitter account. For her to remove that access, as McIntyre experienced, felt painful. McIntyre felt that Ballinger was guilting him, selfishly preoccupied with her reputation rather than his feelings. But she was! If you read them, she started blaming me. After the backlash, she apologized for the tweet later. She denied ever blaming uh, McIntyre. And Wait, hold on. I just got a message. From Slimy Boy. thank you so much for resubscribing for five months. The Megan Trainer joke was funny, and I'm tired of people <laughs> pretending otherwise. One might argue ahead of its time. Hey! The one real she wanted me to give her was more attention to her social medias. I think I did a pretty amazing job of that. What PR person has ever been hired and one of their pieces of work still gets talked about four years later? Anyone want to hit me up? Any PR firm want to hit me up? 
My work is so timeless that it still gets talked about four years later. Said she should have reviewed his tweet more carefully. Again, dummy, oh, years here saying this was day one. Here, day one, here's my access to my Twitter account. And then she says I should have reviewed it more carefully. There's no fucking shot she didn't review that tweet more carefully. It was day one. She also asked to explain it four times. She was going to tweet it herself if you read the messages. No shot. And I've put everything out there. Thank in the YouTube responses to McIntyre's YouTube accusation. A classic back and forth. If the name's James Charles and Tati Westbrook, you think Why are you bringing James Charles and Tati Westbrook into this? You get the idea. Ballinger, 33 at the time of her response to a teenager, posted a classic apology blog. She revealed screenshots of Instagram DMs she'd sent to McIntyre and one that McIntyre's mother had reportedly sent to her, which seems to be Ballinger's way- So why didn't she respond to my mother? Why was she so fine matching with a child? But one, once the adult got involved, whoo, I might, right? Once an adult gets involved, whoo, I might, she said. Of assuring viewers of what really happened, a strategy not unlike McIntyre's. In a DM, she accuses him of going too far. Supposedly in response to him, uh, <clears throat> supposedly in response to him asking her to imagine her newborn son being taken advantage of in the same way he felt he had been. I ate with that message, sorry. What? I had of my time. Adam... He's referencing when Adam texted Colleen about his how upset he was. He said, like, I really hope that no one takes advantage of Flynn like the way you took advantage of me. Okay. And isn't, sorry, at 17 years old, that message, good, good. That message was good. Are you fucking kidding me? What a great point I made for her to diminish it and try gaslight me after. My point, I don't even have to like rework it, was literally my message was on the, along the lines of like, I hope in like 17 years, no one takes advantage of your son the way you've taken advantage of me. What a great, great, great message. Sorry to like tip my own horn, but that was a great fucking message. And then she's like, ah, my son, what are you making my son into? Hey, yeah. And she's like, how dare you bring my son into this? Like Whatever. she wasn't a kid when all this started. Crocodile tears. Uh, she also elaborated. And again, a point I like to make, I was closer in age to her son than I was to her when this all happened, by the way. Just if anyone wants to include that. She was 17 years older than me. Flynn was 16 years. So I was closer in age to her newborn son than what I was to her. She was 17 years my senior. Flynn was 16 years my... What's the word? Junior. Thank you. Flynn was 16 years my junior. Colleen was 17 years my... See, now I have lost whatever word I use. Senior. Think about that. Closer in age to her son than what I was to her. Isn't that... F uh. Oh my god. Her son, by the way, that was just born. Her son was, like, not even a year old. And I was closer in age to her son than to her. What a silly bitch. It upon the lingerie incident during a live stream giveaway with her fans, Ballinger explained McIntyre had asked for the article of clothing. According to her, he'd even sent photos of him jokingly posing in the underwear to group chats. It's okay, that doesn't make it okay. He's still a child. Okay, but also Corey asked me to put them on over my clothes and send him a picture the same way he was wearing them in the live stream. Number one, debunked. And also number two, she edited the live stream out the parts where she offered them to me and wanted me to take them. Bonk. That included Ballinger and her most noted fans. Ballinger painted a seemingly accurate portrait of the Miranda Sings community, a silly place for kids like McIntyre to belong, looking up to an increasingly famous and For kids! Figure. I'm not a monster, I'm not a groomer, and I do not deserve to die. Well, nobody said, nobody said you deserve to die. But they said I deserve to die! They said I deserve to die! And that person you despise maybe didn't deserve to die, but hey, at least you're having fun. They said I should. They said I should. They didn't say you should. Groomer and monster, that's debatable. That was just said in the video. A little <laughs> Did he just say groomer and monster is debatable? Really that she received death threats. <laughs> so this this is very much just like, uh, this is like the video she I did get swatted. Put out. Yeah. That everybody was forgiving her for. This yeah. is basically just that. Addressing yeah. everything. Yeah. Public opinion, or at least YouTube fandom, swayed back toward Ballinger, though the pendulum would sing, uh, swing back and forth for years. I don't know if they comment on that, but that is not true. 
they say that public opinion swayed back and forth between me and Colleen for years. That is such a bold lie that is so crazy to me. Like, it is such a bold lie. Never once was the public opinion on my side until this year. And even until this year, it wasn't my opinion. It wasn't on my side January, February, March, April, May, June. It was after that Cody video. Public opinion swayed back and forth. Entire establish a new YouTube identity as Ballinger's whistleblower. Not true. No. Whistleblower. Frequently posting new videos and racking up 100,000 views by commenting on the hypocrisy of her every move. They're 100% um, painting Adam as... It, it, they're making it sound like every single one of his videos is yep. a yeah. comment. Meanwhile, Ballinger continued to work on a YouTube channel that was far from around to seeing Seth. Offered wholesome. Shut up. Wholesome. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Colleen Vlogs offered wholesome lifestyle content about her kids. McIntyre appeared to seize on this, accusing Ballinger's brother, brother's family, the Ballinger family, who have a family-oriented channel of endangering and exploiting their children online. How creepy that I feel I watched them grow up, he said. It's disgusting. His critique gave way to a denunciation of family channels more broadly. Dude. So, so do you not have a pro Do you not think that family... I'm uh, holding it in. With kids on YouTube with zero regulations that isn't a gray area. Andrew? I'm holding it in. Because you seem to be taking the side that Adam is just saying this without merit just to get views and to talk more about Colleen. What I'm about what he said? I'm holding it For in. For years, this drama was very insular. Okay, I can't hold it in. I will double down on my opinion about family channels, and I have been more vocal about Ace Family, LeBrant Family, Sakoni Jolies, there are family channels I have been more vocal about because anytime I would talk about the Ballinger family or Colleen, I would get fucking dogpiled. And I double down on my family channel analysis. I double down on it. I double down on the fact that the Ballinger family openly post their one of their youngest kids, Parker, in an attempt to get homophobic comments for attention. They will openly post videos about him, leaving the comments on, in which there are thousands of comments calling him every homophobic slur under the sun. There are videos trending making fun of him. They continue to post these because they're the ones that get them the most views on TikTok. The fact that they openly exploit their children. The the fact that their most viewed videos have to do with the likes of uh, vulnerable moments that their kids are in. The fact that when you type in Ballinger family, one of the main suggested videos is Bailey period that people are searching up when your youngest daughter had her period. Don't get me fucking started on the Ballinger family because I will double down 100% on it. Probably should have stayed I had way. to let that out. But on June 7th, McIntyre posted an anti-Ballinger video. Ah, 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 ah! Cody came first. And Cody brought up the sexual DMs and brought it that the conversation with me and Colleen was sexual, so I had to respond to it and also prove that Colleen was talking behind the scenes about me, but whatever. As he does every so often. <laughs> this one was titled My Relationship with Colleen Ballinger. He had new details, he claimed, describing staying up with her back when they were close and listening to her talk about her divorce. According to McIntyre, she uh, embroiled him in a hateful campaign. If people want, I will do like a deep dive expose of the Ballinger family because this article has like pushed me to want to do that now. If you want, I can dissect the fucking problems with that family and the behind the scenes shit that I have on them. And what, and what they've told their kids about different things about them that have never been public. I will fucking go in on the information that I have on the Ballinger family. Don't push me to do that. And against her ex-husband. Then he came to a realization that shocked YouTube. This woman used me. This woman groomed me. Well, I set in motion yet another stream of black blowback against Ballinger, but this time the word grooming captured the attention of the mainstream press as well. That's also something that her lawyer, something was like, oh, the word grooming is being misused. So I, they're very much in line with their optics on this one. Uh, the substance of Ballinger's alleged grooming has not gone beyond what McIntyre has alleged described in his video, grooming. or what a few other fans alleged thereafter. Um, that this is doing a lot of work, bro. This small little uh, after the comma, the substance that is such a good point. of her grooming has not gone beyond what McIntyre described, and also a few other fans that also said stuff. Mm. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. What did they say? Yep. You know what I mean? Putting everything on my shoulders and diminishing that there is anyone else speaking out will make the general public that read this article and do not know about it. Oh my God, this McIntyre kid's fucking obsessed. But you're like, uh, uh, the McIntyre frequently posts his videos and a few other people did as well. Are you telling me about her wholesome content? Why aren't you telling me about the allegations? 
Yo, she literally summarized all that shit to this. Yeah. That's like being like, uh, okay, I know this is an extreme example, but it's like, uh, uh oh, where's he going? Let me think of a good one here. Uh oh. Bill Cosby was accused uh -oh. of roofing this girl's, this one woman's drink. It was only this one time, and also a few times afterwards, as mentioned by like, <laughs> a few other victims. I what? mean, that's extreme, but that that is literally what that reads like. That is literally what that reads like. Saying one story and then be like, and then there's another one. Only one time, and, and that's a few other times. And, like, Zach is so quick with his side right. bites. Jesus it God. has not been interrogated by media outlets reporting on the controversy either. HuffPost published allegations of grooming, flexibility, grooming, flexibly employ the term in a fashion not unlike how it's weaponized in right wing circles against LGBTQ plus. No. Wait, why are you doing that, dude? Why are you making it like that? As yeah. someone like, who, let me gather my thoughts with this because I want to come across in some way respectful whenever I say this next part because I can struggle with this part. Being a member of the LGBTQ plus community and using a stereotype, oh, I need to like compose myself, and and using a stereotype against LGBTQ plus individuals, using that to defend a straight woman who has groomed minors, throwing your own community under the bus with a stereotype to to try benefit a straight woman is crazy. You're selling out your fellow community that are so looked down upon right now in the media, so looked down upon on the media right now, are called all the words under the sun wrongfully, and you're using that as like a, a moment to be like, and this is also happening to this straight woman. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm holding my thoughts on that quite close because I can't really speak much about Andrew other than calling him a piece of shit um, because of the legal proceeding behind the scenes. But I very much so recommend going and watching Peter Mon's videos um, because he goes off, off on that topic. But I've got to hold myself a little bit, you know, restricted, other than just calling him a little piece of shit and a little sellout. Uh, you got to make it like, if you are against Colleen, then you are pro right wing propaganda. Described behavior does not approach the sexual exploitation or abuse that the actual definition of grooming indicates. I don't think groom. Okay. Did you link to the definition of grooming? What is this? There's also a definition of online grooming, which does. The definition of that does very much fall into what we've seen. No, it doesn't have to be sexual. I think traditionally it's been used that way, but it's obviously taking... It's because... And anyone who's using the argument of, you know, grooming has to be sexual is people just trying to excuse the behavior. You'll only see people in Colleen's camp saying that. No one else is really saying that. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating that no one is really making that argument except for people who are defending Colleen? Isn't that crazy? Becoming a more versatile word. Uh, the practice of, of training someone for a particular purpose or activity. The action of attempting to form a relation with a child or young person with the intention of sexually assaulting them or inducing them to commit an illegal act, such as selling drugs or joining a terrorist organization. Well, you could, you could say the weenies was a terrorist organization. <laughs> According to ChildNet, online grooming is where someone befriends a child online, builds up their trust with the attention of exploiting them and causing them harm. Harm caused by grooming can Sorry, be <laughs> sorry, this is so serious for me to be laughing at that. <laughs> I wonder if they include it in this, but did they include the meme of like they were like a second weenies chat has hit the internet? Did they include that in this? Is this in this part or was it like later in the stream? Cause I like want to show it, but if they if they don't show it in this part, I just want to pull it up just in case it isn't because I'm gonna forget. Because this is um a stream part, just in case it isn't, I need. If it is, great. We'll look at it twice. But if it isn't, I just need to pull it up. Because this is a clip from it. Here it is. It says... A second weenies chat has hit the internet. <laughs> it's so stupid. Abuse, both in person or online, or exploitation to obtain sexually explicit images and videos of the child. But it wasn't of the child. So just think, someone on the team right now is, like, manically making that edit. <laughs> 
sexually explicit images. Yeah, I mean, sexual was a cam. Is what her brother did, and that's clearly on another level. It's, that's like that he. That's like I'm pretty sure a crime what he's doing. But this is grooming. I mean, what do you want? You want to split hairs on that? I find it interesting how they're running Dean saying she's not a groomer, and the two photos they used at the top of the article are the Kids' Choice Awards. <laughs> Great point. Great point. Also, this is just a side comment. Why is AB set up so much cooler than the rest of them? Do they all individually design their set? Why is AB's one like a whole studio that's like really cool and the other ones have like a black screen behind them? Does anyone know? Do they create their own sets? Like, look at this. And I mean, AB's Twitch streams, he has like huge setups behind him. Like, smog goes off and stuff whenever, um... Is that the right use of that word, smog? Is that another thing in cars? Like, smoke and fog and stuff. Fog machines go off whenever, um, like, someone subscribes and stuff and he has these big light setups and stuff. So this makes sense with his streams. Do they all create it themselves? Some of them redo their camera setups. So someone said, I've always wondered that. Cam's background is very detailed and cool. Also might be a personal choice of the crew members. Not the LA smog. <laughs> Every time someone subscribes, AB lets out more LA smog into the world. They do their backgrounds themselves. I need to see cams. Can someone... How do I see cams? Can someone tweet me cams background? Because I cannot remember it off the top of my head at all. I'm going to pull my Twitter up on the side. Please tweet it to me. Can someone go find it? I want to see it badly. Anyway, back to this. What they used at the top of the article are the Kids' Choice Awards. <laughs> Good point. She makes wholesome Kids choice award. Bro, have you not seen her new wholesome channel? Yeah. <laughs> Where she exploits her children without any. I I've never seen. It. I can't. See. I mean, she, the I mean, of the she does shove exploit. the camera in their faces. Listen, it doesn't matter if they are happy as fuck. That the relationship is exploitative. Their work is dependent on their adolescent kids working. Yeah. Yep. It's time to be on camera, son. We got to get paid. I'm That's so glad that H3 have the opinion of family channels as well. I have no mercy when it comes to family channels. Child labor. The fuck. Uh, the perception of, of Ballinger as a groomer nonetheless snowballed. Ballinger eventually decided to, what else, post another video on YouTube. She took out her ukulele to awkwardly sing through her defense, implying the internet sees And that was their, their way of describing the ukulele response. Awkwardly sing her way through it. On allegations that she's a groomer for entertainment. She said she wanted her fans to be her friends, admitting that desire was wrong. I'm not a groomer, she's saying, just a loser. This How is that your defense? To, uh, the result uh this this did work for him i think yeah no andrew was really swayed by the uke he's like yeah the uke man it's his fave it was a little awkward but it was a little awkward but it's fine she, she it was fine. Play, the apology was roundly mocked especially on youtube where parodies have already i tweeted mocked. a photo of cam's background thank you sweets let me investigate i'm not a groomer I'm just a loser who didn't understand. I shouldn't talk to fans, and I'm not a predator, even though I. Oh, oh, that is cute. Look at this. You know what this looks like? You know, whenever people have weddings and they have people behind the wall that put their hand through and it gives you champagne, <laughs> this looks like that. I don't know what I'm talking about. Sam made it. Millions of views. Soon, an old video of Miranda Sings performing single ladies in dark green makeup. Stop. This entire about article that. focuses on this fucking Beyonce. He, he he's talked about this dumb blackface controversy like as much as any as like that's so nothing. Yeah, they love to harp on it. Uh, uh Nate was unearthed by former fans. To find it, you need to have a copy of her book with a QR code linking to it who said it looked like she'd be farming a blackface. Her lawyer sent out a statement explaining the uses of makeup. Headlines were changed, although corrections were not issued. Shut up, dude. What are you, her fucking PR? Like, are you her goddamn uh, crisis manager? That being said, they should do a correction. Did they not do Imagine a correction? Imagine this guy was a huge fan. Oh, uh, here. This article has been updated and include comment from Belgium's representative. So it has been updated, dummy. Not a groomer. It's just a loser. loser. Not a groomer. Just, just a loser. loser. Just a loser. Uh, McIntyre and another former fan also alleged that Ballinger sent them new photos from a sex worker. Hold on. I need to grind myself. I'm starting to, like, disassociate like crazy. I, like, can't focus my eyes on anything right now. What is going on? Oh. 
hold on i'm trying to like center myself i'm like i like retained none of that for like the past like two minutes i've like just been like staring hold on let me like oh my god even now i'm like hmm That should work. Posting unverified if troubling text. That worked. <laughs> that worked. Racially insensitive comic performances she performed as Miranda Sings that Ballinger later apologized for have roared back on social media. All this is being filtered into the current YouTube content machine. Wrongdoing exposed with a relentlessness that could rival the anti Amber Heard Brigade. Anti Amber Heard Brigade. Drop there, yo. Do not try to correlate situations that are not correlated. I think that that's like the best way to put it in terms of the Amber Heard thing. It's like, why are you including this? Why? Are, what relevance does you bringing up Amber Heard or even you bringing up Johnny Depp or you bringing up the trial or you like what? What? And, and the fact that they don't even explain why they brought up Amber Heard. They just like mention her in a sentence. Objection relevance. Seriously. Well, the Amber Heard thing was very much uh I don't like it. Yeah. Again, she's trying to group her in because Amber mm -hmm. Heard is now like a. I think people see her as like the. I guess some people see her as the victim of like mob justice. Oh, oh, uh, she was certainly. I think that they were both victims of domestic abuse for sure. They both were horrible to one another. I think she was definitely dogpiled on crazy. It was pretty intense. So, it, yeah. so what this author is attempting to do is say, if you believe Correlate Amber them. Heard was treated unfairly, then you also need to believe that. Colleen Ballinger was right. Unfair. He's trying to make teams. He's trying to get people. Which is exactly what he did before when he was like uh, that LGBT. They're like, yeah, this is weaponized just like right wing circles against LGBTQ plus. This use of it's like throwing everything at the wall and being like, what community is going to stick? What community is going to stick defending her? Have we got the right wing folk? Have we got the Amber Heard folk? Have we got the James Charles folk? Have we got the Taddy Westbrook folk? Have we got like seriously? Yeah, it's a right wing hit job. He's trying to rally up communities. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is very manipulative. After Ballinger posted her ukulele video, McIntyre posted a reaction on Twitch. He was incredulous that Ballinger hadn't apologized to him in private. To remind but she hadn't. She hadn't apologized to me in private. Or publicly. And by the way, I didn't understand. I shouldn't talk to fans. And I'm not. A, that is not an apology. Perhaps that the relationship had reached a turning point years earlier when he sent out a tweet that briefly got Miranda Sings canceled. Back then, a teenage McIntyre, perhaps. <sighs> Hope for sympathy, another chance, a way back into the Ballinger fold. The internet is generally too cruel for that. His judgment's too swift. Them just saying that the reason that I was speaking out against her was because I wanted to be her BFF again? Motherfucker, I was the one that pulled back! But one can look at the devolution of the Miranda Sings empire and see that, long, that the longer it drags out, the harder it is to pin down the exact truth. No. Nope. But they literally only said two things weren't true, which are like the dumbest things. Justifiable outrage turns to silly memes and headlines and videos. If there's one thing the saga of We can Ballinger, multitask with memes and calling her ass out. Don't worry, Andrew. Her fans has taught us it's that today's YouTube winner is tomorrow's loser. This story has no to uh, leave over. If they grim kids, then yeah, tomorrow today's winner will be tomorrow's loser. Don't grim kids. That was not really the takeaway that I had from that article. Mm. I think if it's taught us anything, it's that um Adam McIntyre and all these people be lying. Okay, I mean, wow, that was pretty ballsy that he posted that they posted this. Why does it lie? I think it's crazy <laughs> that they allowed that how, to get published. How are they getting? Oh shit! His whole profile is down. Oh shit! I clicked his profile. It just says this page you were looking for is down. Okay, good. Shit! Today's writer. You can't run though. Yeah. You cannot run <laughs> if the article is still up. You <laughs> cannot run. No, no hate the baristas. We, we tip your baristas, people. We love them. Today's writer is today's not writer. Yeah. Tomorrow. All right, let's talk. Um, I'm glad that they're seeing three. And I think that one of the, the main takeaways that I really appreciated from H3's coverage of this is who this article seems to be, two things, who this article seems to be devoted towards. It's the people that aren't aware of social media, really, and aren't aware of the YouTube world. So we're trying to sway them. And I want to add to that, that I think it's just catered towards the parents. Number one, Colleen has a parent audience now with, you know, the mommy content that she makes because she's so unoriginal. And then number two, I think because the mommies are the ones that buy the kids tickets to the show, they need them back on site and not scared that Colleen will groom their kids and then number two trying to rally as many communities to defend her like you know amber heard people right wing people people that don't like youtube drama like it's really 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 bad 
it's really bad. And I think the fact that Andre Quintana, the journalist, has, like, only recently graduated, I think is what I read. And this is, like, you know, he's, like, written a couple articles and stuff. And, like, this is one of his, like, really big first ones. I think that this is the fit that you're setting off in the media world where every single journalist has made a joke of you and you are such a fucking joke and no one is taking you serious. I think you have sold out your credibility for whatever has happened. Whatever happened here behind the scenes if you were a fan and wanted to defend her or if you were persuaded to write this or if you just genuinely believe this it has backfired on you silly fuck and that's my take on that